Okay, welcome to video number 31 of the Diaries of a Coronavirologist YouTube channel. Today is the 5th of August and we are up to about 18.6 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 around the world and a little bit over 700,000 confirmed deaths. So for tonight's video, I want to talk a bit about vaccination. So I've talked about vaccination before, largely regarding the Chadox vaccine from the University of Oxford. But then I'm going to talk about a slightly different one that's being produced by a company called Novavax based here in Maryland. Now, at the outset, I should say that uh, the lab I work in here at the University of Maryland is involved with this research. So we are on the papers with Novavax regarding this vaccine. My name appears on the papers that are linked to down in the description, but I have no financial interest in this. I am talking about this purely scientifically. I'm not promoting this vaccine above any others or anything like that. Like I say, there's no financial interest. I'm just talking about this scientifically and because it's something we're involved with, I thought I'd put it on the channel being that I called the channels channel the diaries of a coronavirologist. As I say, I've previously discussed the Chadox vaccine candidate on the channel and I'll link to the videos down below so they're easy to find, say if you're going back through the back catalogue. I've also briefly mentioned the Moderna vaccine which is being backed by the NIH here in the United States. So just uh, to briefly recap those vaccines and the whole principle of vaccination and immunity to a, a, a virus and specifically the SARS-2 virus. When the virus enters a human, the immune system detects it and it sees the pieces that are exposed. So when you think of the classic image of the SARS-2 virus, the bits that stick out are the spike protein. And these are the main targets of the immune response that we're trying to develop to in, with a vaccine. So the spike is the most important part for developing a protective immune response. Now, the way the Chadox vaccine works is it takes advantage of the way viruses themselves work. So Chadox, C-H-A-D-O-X, stands for Chimp Adenovirus Oxford, taking the first two letters of each of those. And adenoviruses are DNA viruses. So instead of producing the normal viral proteins of an adenovirus, the Chadox vaccine candidate produces the spike protein of SARS-2. So the approach uses the way an adenovirus infects cells to go in. The DNA sequence for spike is in that virus. That DNA sequence is made into mRNA and that mRNA makes the spike protein. And then the cells that get infected by Chadox vaccine produce the spike protein, the immune system sees it, and in principle, this will trigger an immune response, which could then be protective if the real SARS-2 virus were to come and infect a human who receives the vaccine. The Moderna vaccine works very similarly, although it skips a step. So the Moderna, the Moderna vaccine is an mRNA vaccine. So instead of using a viral vector, which is what the Chadox vaccine is, uh, that uses the DNA virus. The Moderna vaccine is just mRNA, so it skips the DNA to mRNA step. The mRNA goes into cells in the human body. They produce the spike protein, just as I was describing, and that's detected by the immune system to hopefully provide immunity. Both of these technologies, though, are still somewhat experimental. So, for example, there are no licensed RNA vaccines in humans, and we're still going through the phase three trials now for both of these because they've not been licensed before. There's another approach though for getting spike expression in humans or spike to be seen by the immune response or the immune system, which is to just directly inject the spike protein. So instead of coming up with a system of DNA or RNA that then produces the spike protein, you can just directly put the spike protein in, in the form of a subunit vaccine, which is the approach that's been taken by Novavax. And there are other examples of subunit vaccines which are already licensed and already known to be effective for other viruses, as well as some bacterial infections. For example, Cervarix, which is used to vaccinate against human papilloma virus and prevent cervical cancer, is a subunit vaccine. Similarly, the hepatitis B vaccine is also a subunit vaccine, so we know that this approach works already. So in the context of SARS-2 and the Novavax vaccine approach, they are just producing the spike protein of SARS-2. And they do this using insect cells. 
So they produce a virus called bacular virus that infects insect cells, and they make this virus capable of expressing the SARS-2 spike in those cells. In the same way that the Chadox viral vector can produce spike in human cells, their bacular virus vector can produce spike in insect cells. They then collect all of that spike protein produced by the insect cells, purify it, and make it into a vaccine. They also combine this protein subunit with an adjuvant called Matrix M that they've produced themselves. An adjuvant is basically something that boosts the immune system. It helps ramp everything up to a higher level than it would with just the protein alone, and therefore potentially allows you to get a much stronger immune response with less of the input protein, and therefore you can make more doses of the, uh, of the protein available potentially. And I should stress as well that adjuvants are commonly used with many vaccines. So we know, again, that largely they are safe and they are effective. So this is just a way to get a better immune response from their vaccine approach. So this vaccine candidate that's being produced is referred to as NVX CoV COV 2373. And the company Novavax have shown that it produces an immune response in mice and baboons and that it can produce neutralizing antibodies and be protective in mice. So this was a paper that was put up on BioArchive back at the end of June. And again, I'll link to it down below and some of that work we were involved with, as I was saying at the top of the video. But seeing that it was protective in these lab animals has allowed the has allowed Novavax to move into their their clinical trials in humans. And just uh, yesterday, they put out a press release for some of the data from their phase one slash two trial that is ongoing in Australia, releasing just the initial phase one data. So in this work, which is going to be put up on MedArchive, and I won't post this video until it goes up, so I can link down below in the description to the paper, as well as the press release from Novavax, which is also up online, 131 individuals were assessed and they were divided up into a placebo grouping or a vaccine grouping. So the placebo in this case was a salt injection, 0.9% saline. And then there were different vaccine groups that either received five micrograms or 25 micrograms of the protein, the spike subunit protein, and either received the adjuvant or not the adjuvant. So the full combination it was either 25 micrograms, so high dose of spike alone, or five micrograms with, uh, with the adjuvant or 25 micrograms with the adjuvant. So there is a high dose with no adjuvant, a low dose with adjuvant, and a high dose with adjuvant. So you compare those all with the placebo control. The vaccine was administered intramuscularly, so a muscle injection, and there were two doses. So these were three weeks apart on day zero and day 21, and then people were monitored for 35 days. So this is just the phase one part of the trial. So it's a small cohort of 131 people. And the main aims are to see whether the vaccine is producing an immune response, whether there's antibodies, whether they're specific to the spike protein, whether they inhibit infection of virus in the lab, which is the thing we were involved with, and whether it's safe. So monitoring the people to see if there's any adverse reactions to the vaccine. So on the safety front, there were some mild reactions to the vaccine. So people reporting tenderness and soreness at the site of injection. Some people developed mild fever, things like this. But you see this commonly with quite a lot of vaccines. Similar data has been found with other vaccine candidates for this virus. There are also some slightly more severe adverse events. So two people had a more severe uh, reaction after the first dose and a further eight people had more severe reaction after the second dose. But none of these required any massive medical intervention and none of them were dropped out of the trial. They, they didn't have such a severe reaction that they couldn't continue. And there were protocols in place that the vaccination would be stopped if there were such severe reactions to warrant it and these weren't met. So everything seems safe on that front. And in terms of the immune response that was produced, there was also promising news there insofar as everyone that received the low dose or the high dose of the protein subunit, along with the adjuvant, produced a very good immune response. 
People who just received the protein subunit alone didn't produce such a good antibody response, but those that received the low dose or high dose with adjuvant did produce a good response. And importantly, the low dose and high dose were pretty much equivalent in terms of the level of antibodies that were produced. So this is good because it means that the five microgram and 25 microgram dose are the same, meaning that you can vaccinate five times as many people, so long as you've got enough of the adjuvant to be included in all of those vaccine doses. As well as producing a good level of all round antibody, these antibodies were very effective at inhibiting infection of virus cells in the lab. So they produce these neutralizing antibodies, which is what you want to see because they're effective at inhibiting infection of the virus uh, when looked at in the lab, which is the work we were involved with here. Now, interestingly as well, they also compared the antibody response in the people who received the vaccine to sera, convalescent sera, that was taken from patients who were infected with the real virus and developed COVID-19. So they compared their vaccine uh, recipients with people that were either outpatients for COVID-19 or people who were hospitalized by COVID-19. And what they found was that their, their protein subunit and adjuvant were capable of producing an antibody level similar to people that were hospitalized by COVID-19. So the people that, severe, that get the most severe infection without dying, obviously that's the most severe, were producing an antibody response that was similar to that induced by the Novavax vaccine. So this is really good because it suggests that there is a very good antibody response that's being produced by this vaccine. And finally, they also found that there was a T-cell response in recipients of their vaccine candidate. So as well as producing a very good antibody response, people seem to develop a T-cell response. So both arms of the adaptive immune system, which is the one that remembers infections and can protect you from being reinfected, seem to be getting activated. So this is promising data. So overall, the data are showing that the Novavax vaccine is safe. It produces a good antibody response that has neutralizing antibodies capable of inhibiting infection of cells by the real SARS-2 virus in the lab. And it also activates the T cell side of the immune response. It also shows that the antibody response that's produced is similar to that of people who are hospitalized by COVID-19 and recover, and in fact, slightly higher than people who are just outpatients for COVID-19. So it really looks like it's triggering a good level of immune response. Now, this is just the phase one arm, and it's just over a short period of time. So 131 people, some of whom were part of the placebo arm, uh, it's just a small sample of people and it was over a 35 day period. More research is of course needed as with everything here. This is a long way behind the other vaccines I mentioned earlier in the video. So the Chadox and Moderna vaccines are both going into their phase three trials where they're looking at over 30,000 people. So this vaccine has got some catching up to do, uh, candidate, sorry, vaccine candidate I should say, has got some catching up to do. Uh, much more study needs to go into it, but there is promising early signs and it's more good news in our hopes of getting at least one and hopefully multiple vaccines licensed by 2021 or sometime into 2021, which still remains my, my hope for when we will have vaccines starting to go into humans, starting to be licensed and starting to be hopefully found to be effective. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to tackle them. If you found the video useful or interesting, or hopefully both, please remember to leave a like for the YouTube metrics. Please remember to subscribe and hit the no notification button so you'll find when I get new videos. Alternatively, you can follow me on Twitter. I put my handle down in the description to all these videos if you want to follow me over there. And as always, please stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask and keep calm and carry on. We will get through this pandemic.